Welcome back to my channel. I've been gone for a couple weeks because I was sick, but I didn't let my plants down. I want to show you what's been going on down here in the seedling room for the last couple weeks. So for middle of March 2022. Here's an overview of my indoor seedlings. I want to show you them overall. I won't spend time on each individual seedling. But right here, we have a bunch of my peppers and then a few gomfrina, strawberry gomfrina. They are a flower that you can dry and they will hold their color. So overall, so pleased. These were all some of the earliest things that I started, all the peppers. I have to say my best looking peppers are the um, Lesia peppers. And every time I go, oh, that's a good looking pepper. It's Alessia. Shout out to Nicole Smith Gardening for getting me into those. Those are some happy seedlings. I have a little bit of up, up potting to do because I have some basil that is ready to be up potted. It's got its first set of leaves and I know they'll grow so much better as soon as I up pot them. This sad little tray is the a mix of some of my good peppers from the second round, but also it's a lot of my first round peppers. So believe it or not, some of these were the guys that I planted first at the very beginning of February and they're just terrible. So I'm so glad I started a second generation. Funny enough, the only one of the mystery peppers, the little mini sweet bells you get from the grocery store, the only one of those seeds came up and it's actually one of the healthiest looking plants. So this is most likely a hybrid. But I'm so excited to just have one and to see what it produces. If you've never seen Buena Mulatas, this is a cool pepper. You see that purpling? They are just always so striking in the color of the leaves and then as they get older, really just the peppers. So moving on. This was me not really being efficient with seed sowing. I had a bunch of things in the middle and then I, I trans up potted them. And then I started things on the edges. So now I have all this light coming down on nothing, but the things on the edges are what are important. I have some nasturtiums. They're so cute. I need to up pot these. I will probably do it today. I have some weirdly leggy lettuce. And then I have more gomfrina because I am going to dry all the flowers. And this is more basil and then my Greek oregano. I've sown it over and over this spring and that's the healthiest bunch. So I'm going to be up potting those. Here you can see a handful of odd things, peppers, flowers, but I want to definitely show you my cucumelon. Look at this little guy. He has grown so well. And these are two cucumelon that I actually saved seeds from for last year because I was low on cucumelon seeds and I decided to save them even though the cucumelons were being attacked by a little pickle worm of some kind. So I just covered a couple of them with a mesh bag and let them get as big as I could stand and then they actually just fell off the vine and I was able to just go well if it fell off that's probably as mature as that fruit's going to get and I saved the seeds and sure enough two for two revival definitely try that out so you don't have to revive your cucumelons nothing cross pollinates with them because they're their own species I had other cucumbers growing but that's not a concern okay now we're up to the tall shelves I have some flowers in here and a little bit of peppers but more fun, this is a bunch of different flower varieties, and I'm trying not to be too shaky. So over here, we're looking at marigolds and zinnias and cosmos. And if you want to see what seeds and what varieties, uh, take a check out at um, my earlier videos on what I'm sowing in March. But overall, my favorite that I'm most excited for are the zinnias. And then I'm really curious to see the double-click cosmos. I got the seeds from my mom. <laughs> Oh, the zinnias are just so healthy. I do plan to pinch them this year. I don't think I've ever pinched zinnias, but look at that. That is just a happy, healthy plant. Also, if you're wondering, these little newspaper cups are inspired by You Can't Eat the Grass. I just did what she recommended and I used a small jar. It was actually my yeast jar. I finished it up and I thought, well, that's all the depth I need because these guys are going in the garden in like two weeks. And then you may have heard or seen my tomatoes. I, I really started these guys so much later this year than last year. Last year, I had the tomatoes going from here in the tray all the way up to like here. 
or even higher, honestly, some were taller. Oh, you can't even see how high. Some were even well above the light. I had, I can raise these lights, you know, they're attached on a chain and on a nail, so I can just raise them up. I really did a much better job timing these tomatoes. They are vigorous. I don't see a single disease leaf. I do see some purpling on a couple of these. And, you know, I it's getting more and more dramatic by the day. So if you know what that might be, just please let me know. The leaves are curling. I don't think it's a disease. I think there's probably a nutrient issue. And that's fine. Uh, I will fertilize them here coming soon. But this is all cherry tomatoes. And I definitely planted more than I have room for. I will be giving these away. So if my family does come and visit me, they're going to get some free rare cherry tomatoes. I have the uh, Sun Gold variety, of course. I have Isis Candy and then the Super Sweet 100. And so two of the three are hybrids, but wow, the Sun Golds just did so well last year. It was worth it to get hybrid seeds because they, they lasted literally from when I started the seeds in mid-March actually mid-February, <laughs> I started them so early, they went and were producing cherry tomatoes for me all the way until um, the first frost came in in late, late October. I had to tear the plants down. They were still producing. And then the final tray, we have some more nasturtiums. They got to start in these, oh, maybe they're four inch cups. And so look at the quality of those plants. They're the same age as the ones further down there in that little seedling tray. So really giving them the space is what they deserve. So in addition to those little seedling trays that I need to up pot, I also am gonna up pot every single thing in this tray and give it its own space because they are ready. Look at these pretty guys. So anyway, this is the seedling room. Thank you for joining this tour. So I actually filmed another couple videos, but I am so old. I filmed them vertically, so I couldn't even bring myself to post them. So I have a lot to show you outside. We built some new raised garden beds this last weekend, and we also have been like amending the soil, and I've got a ton of cool things in my container garden. So I'll definitely be trying to show you all that, and it will just take a matter of time to get out there, get good weather. Until then, I hope you really enjoyed the seedling room. I can't wait to hear what your garden seedlings are doing right now. I think some people are starting to get to their last frost date already. I'm not going to be planting anything out until at least April 10th. And that's if it looks nice and warm. That's our last frost date. And for the peppers and everything, they are going to get a whole nother month here in the grow room or out getting hardened off before they get planted. So otherwise, please subscribe and like if you enjoyed this video. There will be more coming. I might even buy a tripod soon, so it won't even be shaky. Thanks for your time.